The Bloom Bear Camellia is finally here and I don't know about you, but after seeing that trailer, I know for a fact that she is the honored one. So let's honor her today by testing her viability in every team imaginable to really test how viable she can be with the current roster of characters. Now before we begin, I don't own Jinshi and I don't own Ardcore. And my wife, who is my normal bait and switch target, has both entities. So instead of waking her up and forcing her to get Camellia, I decided to let her sleep. Comment down below if I should just toss her out the bed and make her pull for Camellia for y'all's sake next time. Anyway, my name is Void Enigma, and without further ado, let's go into all of her possible team options. I will first be showcasing her best teams, or quote unquote best for that sake, and then we'll be going into more of her fringe teams and see how she performs. For this showcase, here is Camellia's stats, she is level 80, here is her forte being level 9 on the major skills, and her weapon is level 90. Here's her echo stats, and let's go right into it. Firstly, the question on which healer to use is going to be Axe. Baiji and Yohu will always be an option, but they will be excluded from this video, since essentially, they're just harder to use in comparison to their 5 star counterparts. Now, from my general testing, Shorekeeper is a much better character for Camellia teams. The 12.5% crit rate and 25% crit damage buff is somewhat substantial. She could take a bit longer to get off her outro, but this is fine since Camellia wants to be on field for most of the part. Verena excels in teams that do quick swaps since she is much better on field for that case. For the sake of this video, if the team being displayed is meant to enable Camellia for her hyper carry role, then I'll be using Shorekeeper. If this team is meant to demonstrate a quick swap role, then I'll be using Verena. Also, Verena is still an amazing buffer, but Shorekeeper is just slightly better, with the downside of taking longer to get off her outro buff. So, for the first few teams, we'll be talking about the two characters who are potentially the best partner for Camellia, and that's going to be Sanhua and Dungeon. Sanhua offers a massive 38% basic attack damage amp, and Dungeon offers a 24% havoc damage boost. Both work great, but the difference here is... Dungeon deals more overall team damage if you play her optimally, while Sanhua gives a massive outro buff a lot sooner. This will let Camellia hit the field much sooner as well. Both are a means to an end because the purpose of this team is to get Camellia on field to get that concerto maxed up, and then you can leave with her ephemeral bloom. This team is the most comfy to play, and surprisingly, it's actually not her best team. Now this next team is not her best, but I'm going to say Yang Yang thoroughly surprised me. She's level 21. Yeah, like, level 21. Her echoes, also, are all level 0. She's using a level 70 overture, and thanks to her quick and search gains, because of that overture, and her quick swaps, Camellia was able to keep her liberation up at all times We help fuel her concerto for her ephemeral bloom and honestly, she is just an amazing 4 star because this team felt very smooth. Imagine if she was built, and of course, if the boss wasn't heavily resistant to Aerio. Really, go build your Yang Yang if you actually need some grouping, because she will be a great addition to any of your teams. Now, those were her go-to teams, but honestly, when it comes to quick swap teams, I was honestly surprised, but it does go without saying, if you use quick swap well, you will clear faster, hands down. A quick swap gameplay will always surpass a hyper harry gameplay, at least at this point until we get some 5 star supports who will match the current state for the outro buff. Shenli is up first, and this is the most fun I had with any of the Camellia teams. Shenli is able to weave in and out and do good spurts of damage, and when Camellia is ready to let loose, she is really ready to let it rip. This team got me the fastest, but this is also due to the fact that Shenli is the best built character on my account. This team will actually play very similar if you swap Shen Li for Jin Shi. You'll have to tweak the rotation of course a little bit. The idea behind this is to let your sub DPS get off their nukes and then Camellia will come on field to do as much damage as possible. Camellia still needs extensive field time, but it's all about setting up the proper rotation through quick swaps to let Camellia dish out her damage with almost no downtime. Shen Liya also felt really good to play, and my Shen Liya was nowhere near as well built as my Shen Li, and I was able to clear this very comfortably, using quick swap methods. It was really fun, and in this particular run, I didn't let Shen Li stay on field for long. I just let her come in, let off her ephemeral bloom, and then swap off. I could have shaved off a few seconds had I let Shen Li actually do more of the heavy lifting. 
Gion is a funny one because he's not really meant to be a quick swap. He is in the same category as Gamalia, a selfish DPS. Nonetheless, I was still able to clear in almost 2 minutes. Just keep in mind, I could have cleared it in 2 minutes if I really wanted to, but it didn't feel like really tryharding. And Gion is heavily debuffed by this guy. So it's definitely something that will work surprisingly. Now, someone else who surprised me. Chisia. Man oh man Chisia. In a 1v1, always bet on Chisia. Her single target damage is just insane and she's able to actually clear quite quickly when compared to the other teams. I was impressed with her overall performance. I did use Shorekeeper here because I feel it was more a representation of two on-field DPSs rather than quick swapping. I suspect that Encore would actually work very similar to Chishia in this case, but will require some more skill expression to bring out her full potential. Now as for Calamari. Calazone is not fully optimized on my account, however, I'm 100% sure that a quick swap team with Calculator would be viable. It's not like Calculus is actually hard to use here, and Comatose works very similarly to Geon for newbies, and Chun-Li for someone who really knows how to quick swap. I got in a quick combo with Centurion to demonstrate that it would indeed work. So Cal Synergy actually has some synergy with other characters in a quick swap method because he can actually quick swap in and do some quick damage. So go out there with your Cal Bazooka and blow up some monsters because he does work. Now Havoc Rover isn't the best but it's still a decent option. Similarly to other DPS that I've actually compared to at this point, with some setup the Double Dreamless is actually very nice and I did use her on the next stage to actually demonstrate the AoE in this scenario. Definitely a team that can work and clear content for those who want to pair up these two. Spectro Rover, on the other hand, was a blast to use, although I'm missing a complete set for her, so I just kind of stole, I mean borrowed, more of these. Her talents aren't really that raised either, but the time stop and sub DPS damage is appreciated. I'm 100% sure that she is actually a better choice for a hyper carry Camellia than Havoc Rover, but both will kind of work. Now that we got all of the hyper carries and quick swaps out of the way, let's get into more quick swaps, but sub DPS side of quick swaps. They were actually quite enjoyable to use with Camellia. Yinlin is first, and starting with her, you gotta love it. Yinlin has the bonus of buffing her liberation damage as well, so the seamless quick swaps and off-field damage is very much appreciated, and that little bit of a boost to her liberation damage is also very nice. And it just goes to show you how strong Yinlin is as a sub DPS because this team just really just works. It doesn't stop there though because Camellia is actually like a one man army. With some help from a sub DPS damage like with Jeji or any off field support in that matter, she clears quite comfortably. Camellia is proving to be her own power is enough to carry the team as long as she has a little bit of support from her supports of course. Mortify is in the same boat with his off field damage but doesn't really come close to Jeji but he doesn't really buff Camellia either. So he works, but there's always going to be a better option. Considering that Jeji's going to do more damage and the other sub DPS on the list would just bring more to the table. Again, it works, it's just not optimal. Tauchi is a character I wanted to use for a triple dreamless setup comp, but sadly, mine isn't raised yet and you're just going to be seeing her hit very little. I feel like it would be a very fun team and Tauchi has enough shielding power to keep the team alive when she's fully built. Definitely something I'll do in the future. Now for the remaining characters, I can't really justify their place on Camellia's team because they offer almost no value. Ling Yang would kinda work, but she's in the same boat as Jian, so they're really not going to be that great of a pairing. Hyunwoo is a decent choice as well, but he doesn't really have a quick concerto gauge, and you do want to trigger an intro into Camellia to get off the full benefits of her kit. Alto, despite being a member of the Black Shores, can offer Camellia just a taunt. I can see this working for holograms, but in the tower, you normally want more damage, not utility. I haven't raised him yet either, but trust me, he is on my list of characters to raise. He would work, but he's just not going to be the best because his outro is going to buff aerial damage. Camellia is surprisingly versatile, and thanks to her damage being very significant, she works with any other DPS in the game. Like seriously, it's quite spectacular to see. Using her Concerto Gauge to quickly dish out a ton of quick DPS is just something else. She can only get better than here once we get a 5 star version of a basic attack buffer to replace Sanhua, it's really going to be then that we see her true ceiling. 
Considering Camellia is only level 80 at this point, I can't wait to see how much damage she's going to be doing at level 90. Let me know what's your favorite team with Camellia and how you plan on using her. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe for more enigmatic content in the future. This has been Void Enigma, and it's next time, Enigma out.